Hello everybody, Mobius1 here bringing you another Star Wars Galaxies emulator video. In this episode we're going to go over the Phase 1 Jedi Village quest to unlock the Crafting Mastery Assembly Branch. To begin this quest, you're going to want to come to the southeastern side of the village and talk to this Mon Calamari Quarek. I believe I'm saying that right. He's going to say, you there, are you handy with a set of tools? And you'll say, yes, I suppose I am. He'll say, great, our sensor array was damaged in the last attack on this village by the Sith Shadows. It needs to be repaired, but unfortunately our chief engineer was also killed in the attack. So you'll say, you want me to take a look at the sensor array? And he'll say, that's it exactly. You catch on quick. If you will, take a look at the damage, see what needs to be repaired, and fix it up for us. He'll say, I think I can handle that. And he'll say, good show. If you help us out with this, I will help you learn uh, to use the force to enhance your assembly skills. Yes, I will repair the sensor. I will go repair the sensor array. And he'll warn you, of course, you understand that this job will take a while, and if you agree to fix this thing, you won't be able to help anyone else with anything for a while, right? And that's just the warning that you get for any village quest, where if you accept this quest, you, this is the only quest you'll be able to do until the village phase rotates. So if you say, that sounds fine to me, you'll say, good, you better get to work then. The sooner we get that thing back online, the better. And you'll get a waypoint over here first run a little bit just to get over here a little quicker to the village sensor array when you get here it says find and examine the sensor array um, there is a terminal here you're going to interact with you'll click and hold on it and go to access terminal this box will pop up and you'll see you have four components that are damaged the configuration processor the gyroscopic receiver the signal amplifier and the solid state array what you're going to want to do is click on each of these and click retrieve. That's going to remove the broken components from the sensor array. Once they're all removed, you'll see it now says component not found. That's because you have them all. They're in your inventory. You can see them here. Once you have all of them, you're going to want to turn around and go into this hut that you have a waypoint to. Well, you'll find a couple of things that you can interact with laying around on the floor and on this table. You have a recursive analyzer and a multi-phase calibrator. You're going to want to interact with the recursive analyzer first. You'll go to use analyzer. You're going to choose deconstruct a component. And then you're going to choose one of the four that you have. Doesn't matter which one first. You're going to end up doing it to all of them. So we're going to go through this process four times. And you'll see each time you do it, the list does get shorter until finally we do it on the fourth one. And now we have draft schematics for each individual component. You'll notice if I open my inventory, I no longer have them. But if I open my data pad and go to draft schematics, uh, you'll have to ignore all of these are here because I'm a master doctor. But if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see here are the draft schematics for each of the components. Basically, we're going to craft new ones to replace the broken ones. Now, at this point, you're gonna to wanna to have a tune with at least Novice Artisan because we're gonna to have to go out and find these very specific resources to craft these. I guess, technically, you don't need to have an Artisan tune. You could go on the bazaar or vendor search and buy the resources. However, you need such a small amount of them, and they are very specific resource types, so it might actually be quicker to just get on a new tune, pick up Novice Artisan, and go get them yourself. Luckily, I'm on the Nova server recording this, so I can use the Vet Reward 30k resource deed multiple times, and I got one of each resource type. Now I'm going to go over the different types of resources that you need to bring, but I'm not going to go over the value. Like I showed in the data pad, you can see the amount of each resource that you need to make each of these components. However, you will see a little later in this video that it is a little bit more complicated crafting these components than just crafting a regular item in galaxies. And if you mess up, you do need more resources to try again. So really, I recommend bringing more than the required amount of resources which is why I'm not going to tell you what that required amount is. I personally would recommend bringing a couple hundred units of each type. So what exactly are the resources that you need? The first one is steel. Any kind of steel will work. The next is copper. Any kind of copper will work. Then aluminum, any kind. Then polymer, any kind. You'll need lubricating oil, any kind. And then carbonate 
ore. It needs to be carbonate ore. Then extrusive ore. Again, needs to be extrusive. You will need specifically Rory fiberplast and specifically Telusian fiberplast. You'll need specifically Nabooian water vapor and specifically Yavinian, I think that's how you say that, wind energy from Yavin. In order to collect these by yourself, you're going to need a mineral survey device, a chemical survey device, a water survey device, and a wind energy survey device. If you're not familiar at all with how to sample or survey for resources and galaxies, I'll put a link in the video description to one of my crafting videos. In addition to all of these crafting resources, you're also going to need a generic crafting toolkit. The quality on both the toolkit and the resources doesn't matter. Additionally, once you have the resources, you actually don't need the novice artisan skill in order to continue with this quest. As you can see, I am not an artisan, but I'm still going to be able to complete this on this tune. Once you've deconstructed all four components, got your generic crafting toolkit and all the resources needed, you're going to use the toolkit and click the mission tab, and here you'll see all four of the components. We're just gonna start from the top, but really the order doesn't matter. So configuration processor, you can see it needs the Rory fiberplast, the aluminum and the copper to fill both of these slots. We're going to assemble, you're gonna say yes. And you'll see because I'm not an artisan, it says this item, this item assembly barely succeeded. That doesn't have any impact on anything at all. However, I will note that if you critically fail the attempt of assembling the item, you actually don't lose the resources. So that's a bonus. We're gonna click next and click create object and then click yes. It's gonna take 10 seconds to pop out of the crafting tool. And there we go. It comes out in our inventory. However, if you look at status, it says not calibrated. If we were to attempt to put this back into the sensor array at this point, it would not accept it because it first needs to be calibrated. That's where this multi-phase calibrator comes in. We're going to interact with this and go to use calibrator. Configuration processor is going to be listed here. We're going to click OK. And here we have our first puzzle. Each of these components, when we go to calibrate it, is going to present you with some sort of logic puzzle. The first thing you'll notice is right here in big yellow letters it says integrity 100%. Basically any time you make a move in one of these logic puzzles, the component is going to lose integrity. Now if you complete the puzzle, it doesn't matter how much integrity was left. As long as you complete the puzzle, you can still proceed with the quest. However, if the integrity ever reaches 0%, the component is lost and you're going to need to craft a new one. Just to show you how that works, I'm just gonna hit a bunch of buttons real quick. Wow, we solved it. But let's assume we didn't. I'm gonna destroy this completed one. Um, so yeah, so say we messed up. The component will still be in your inventory, except it'll say, I forget what it'll say, and you're gonna have to delete it. But now you'll notice if you go to craft a new one, there's nothing listed here. That specific component is not here. That's because in order to get another draft schematic, you actually have to interact with this thing again, do a load schematic from memory and then configuration processor. That loads again another schematic for that one and now you can craft it again. Okay, so we got the new one in our inventory. We're going to use the calibrator on it. And so basically what you're trying to do here is match these top triangles with the bottom ones. Each of these are buttons and when you click on one it's going to activate or deactivate a certain number of other triangles. For example, if I click this one, you'll see it turns all of those off. Now what the game doesn't tell you is that you can actually click on these ones that have been turned off, even though they don't highlight like these ones do. You'll notice if I click this, it still activates, you know, and deactivates other triangles. Also, I just noticed if the integrity number is not displaying properly, you just need to resize the window. And there you can see now my integrity is at 80%. So we're gonna lower that to zero just to show you what happens. Um, you'll notice that each time I click a triangle, the integrity goes down 
And if you click the same triangle, you'll notice that each time you click it, it always affects the same other triangles. But let's drain this to zero just to see what happens. Okay, integrity is zero. We can no longer interact with it. If we close this, it's still in our inventory, and here it says status damaged, and that is how, or that's why you have to destroy it. Now, I'm going to put a very crude image that I made on screen right now so you can see exactly what each triangle does when you click it. The triangles with the green dot are the ones that are clicked, and the filled in red triangles are the ones that are affected when the triangle with the green dot is clicked. So each time you go to calibrate this, your target image, the bottom half of this, is always going to be different. However, the triangles that are affected by the ones in the top are always the same. So unfortunately, I can't really show you exactly what you need to do in order to get your end result. But if you kind of use this little image and you know, think through the process, you can use that to kind of figure it out yourself. So actually this one is really simple. By looking at the image, I see that I have to get the entire right triangle darkened and the two rightmost triangles on the left large triangle darkened. By looking at my key image, I can actually see that that solution is doable with only two clicks. By clicking in this top triangle on the left side, that's going to affect the two on the right side here and here. And then by clicking the top one on the right side is actually going to do all three of the other ones that need to be darkened. There we go, done. Now, certain combinations of your target uh, configuration are going to be more challenging than that. You may need to temporarily turn triangles off that need to be on and then turn them on again by clicking a different one. This can be rather challenging. Um, this is probably one of the most difficult components to calibrate, believe it or not which is why I recommend bringing extra resources so you can have multiple attempts. But okay, that's the first one calibrated. Let's craft the next one. We're gonna do the gyroscopic receiver next. That needs the wind energy, that needs steel, that needs the lubricating oil, and it also needs copper. And we will craft that, and once again, that's gonna take 10 seconds to pop out. You'll notice also that we have the configuration processor still in our inventory that says status operational. That's the goal. We need all four components operational. All right, now that we have the gyroscopic receiver in our inventory, we're going to use the calibrator on it and we get this puzzle. And this is actually a terrible example of this puzzle. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and abort that process. All right, there we go. So the goal of this one is to adjust these sliders to get the brightness of the top three rectangles to match the brightness of the bottom three. Now I believe it's just this top one is the first rectangle, the middle one is the middle one, and the bottom one is the third one. But I'm not 100% on that, so let's play around with it and see. Um, obviously the top three rectangles are all solid white, so the far right side is white and the far left side is black. So we're going to kind of try to guesstimate roughly where we think this is. So this looks to be a little bit, I would say, darker than half, but not by much. This one looks just a little bit darker than pure white. And this one looks pretty dark, but not solid dark. So let's try that. I'm going to click OK. Oh, wow, we got really close. So the integrity went down 10%, but now we can adjust these again. So we're going to take this one down a little bit. I think this needs to be a little bit darker. Uh, this one also needs to be a little bit darker. And that one looks pretty much exactly right. So let's just click OK and see. Hmm. Okay, this one needs to be still darker. And I'll make this one just a tad darker. Now, I don't think you need to be exact but you need to be pretty close. Let's click OK and see. Here we go, successfully calibrated. That one's pretty easy. Craft the third one, now we're gonna do the signal amplifier. That needs the Talusian fiberplast, carbonate ore, aluminum, and copper. All right, let me go to calibrate the signal amplifier. 
This one is kind of like the last one, but a little trickier. Same concept though, we need to get this top uh, gradient, I guess. I don't know what you would call this. They look like, it's like a bar graph to match the bottom one. However, what these sliders do is a little more confusing. As a matter of fact, I don't really remember what they do. So let's play around with it together. To try and figure out what they do, I'm gonna mess with one of them at a time. So this first one, preamp boost. I'm gonna take that all the way to the end and just click okay, leaving the other two sliders where they are. That kinda seemed to level it out a little bit, but it also affected the bottom one. Let's bring it all the way to the left and see what that does. Okay, so that dropped everything down, but it's still kind of a slight gradient. I'm gonna leave this one all the way to the left and we're gonna bring amplification all the way up. I think this is gonna raise all of the bars evenly. Let's click okay and see. Yeah, okay, so you can see every bar was raised, but the uh, curve here remained the same. So we need more of a curve and we also need them to come down. So I'm gonna lower the amplification down to about here for now, and we're gonna bring the preamp boost back up. Hopefully that gives us a little bit better of a curve. Okay, it did. I think I actually have too much of a curve. Let's see what the post amp tuning does. I'm gonna bring this all the way to the left. Let's click okay and see what that does. Oh wow, that really flattened out our curve. All right. So it seems like the preamp boost and the post amp tuning kind of affect the curve and the amplification affects the starting point. So amplification needs to be a little bit higher. This first bar is still too low. So let's bring that up to about there. And let's bring that up to about there and just hit okay and see. Yeah, all right, so this first bar looks to be about right. So I think amplification is good. However, we need more of a curve. Let's bring preamp boost up way up to here and see. Yeah, to be honest with you, I think this one just requires a little bit of playing around with it. This seems to be making a more even. Yeah, okay, so post amp tuning is the, um, I guess the rate of curve or how how quickly the uh, the bars begin to change. Or maybe that's just how much they change. I think that might be it. I think post amp tuning might be how much variance there is from one bar to the next. Honestly, this is the one that I hate the most. Whenever I do this one, I kind of just keep playing with it until I get it. There might be like a science to it, but honestly, you have so many guesses. You'll see my integrity is only going down 4% per um, attempt. So if you just keep kind of like fine tuning it, eventually you're gonna end up getting it. All right, so I couldn't get that one. We're gonna have to destroy that signal amplifier and make another one. Interesting, this one, our target, our first box is completely empty. So let's see what happens if we bring all of these to the left. Yeah, all right, this actually went up a little bit when we did that. But you can see our thing is completely gone now. So if we bring amplification up just a little bit. Let's bring it up all the way, actually. Interesting, so that's more than just the starting point. Let's bring this all the way up. Wow, we completed it. That was the solution. Interesting. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, I wish I had more uh, guidance for you on this one, but um, I have a really difficult time with the signal amplifier myself. You just kind of have to play around with it, bring many resources so you have many attempts, and trust me, eventually you'll get it. But all right, three down, one to go, solid state array. That needs the water, the extrusive ore, the polymer, and more copper. And this one's actually not that bad, though I don't, I feel like we're missing something here. There's supposed to be like a yellow line, I think. 
Let me just adjust one of these and see if it pops up. Okay, there it is, it's a blue line. So basically what we're trying to do here is line each of these green bars up so that the blue line you see in the background passes through these gaps in each bar. And we do that with the sliders. So we need this gap to move a little bit more to the right. We're gonna move this slider a little bit to the right, which shifts both this and this to the right. Now this one, we need to come to the left, but here's where it gets a little bit tricky. You'll notice that this bar is way over here to the right. If we were to move this slider even further to the right, this bar would move off screen to the right and loop back around to the left. So I'm going to try moving it way all the way to the left and see if this moves far enough over. If not, I'm going to have to move it way to the right. So we'll do that for now and see. Uh, this one is too far to the right. It needs to come further left. This one needs to move just slightly to the right. I think that might be enough. And this one, so here's a good example. This one needs to come way to the left. But you can see the slider is almost all the way to the left already. So instead, we're going to move it to the right, and that's going to move it off to the right and back around from the left. Hopefully that's enough. We'll try that and click OK. All right, so it's closer, but not quite there. You see, we almost got it with this top one. We're going to slide this just slightly left. This one needs to come just slightly right. This one needs to come even further right. This one needs to go a little bit back to the left. And this one needs to go quite a ways back to the left. OK. We're even closer. This one slightly to the right. More to the left. Slightly left. Slightly right. And a little bit to the right. Boom. Done. Not bad. So that one's pretty simple. Once you're done, check your inventory. Make sure you have all four components and they all say operational, which they do. Then all you need to do is go back over to this sensor array terminal. You're going to interact with it, access terminal. You're going to click on each of these and you're going to click replace. Replace, 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 and replace. And that is it. You've successfully repaired the sensor array. You feel your mind open itself to the potential secrets of experimentation, which is weird because this is actually crafting mastery assembly, not experimentation. And you get an Aurelian sculpture section four out of four. Well, do keep in mind, if you do plan on unlocking and training this branch, you're not going to be able to convert combat XP into the force sensitive crafting XP. You are actually going to have to do a lot of crafting and convert that XP into force sensitive crafting XP. However, if it's village phase one and you've got nothing better to do and you want Aurelian sculpture piece four out of four, then feel free to do this quest. You unlock the branch and you don't need to train it. You can train the other six branches that you need in order to become a Jedi. However, that extra little bit of assembly might help you craft your lightsaber once you do actually become a Jedi, if you've got the patience to sit through all the crafting. But that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful, regardless of the uh, not so clear instructions on that third component. If anyone has uh, more specific instructions on that particular puzzle, feel free to comment below and I'll uh, put what you have to say in the video description if it is actually helpful. So be sure to check the video description for the link to the crafting video if you're unfamiliar with that. And of course, any additional or corrected information will be down there as well. Thank you guys for watching. Mobius1 here, and I'll see you in the next one.